either when you look at what is being planned for pensions as well, if you don't mind me saying your age, 63 year old man. Um, when you look at what Labour, again, relatively vague in terms of they're, they're going to look at the system yeah. and see what needs to be done, That's which it. Yeah. could indicate it's a review, uh, some it? sort of. Um, it's all review. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of review. Apparently, there was review was mentioned 63 or 64 times in their manifesto. We're going to review this and we're going to review that. But they have said they're not going to change the triple lock. So that means you know that certain things are going to be definite. But yes, they're going to be looking at um, taxes. But can I just come back to the reform part? Because the reform part was, you know, if you come and look at the IFS and, and what their plans were, they, they, they couldn't even add up the numbers. You're saying, it's, you know, you want to take some money from here and then do this. The, the reform plans seem very vague, even more vague than the other parties, to be fair. Mm. Does someone like Nigel Farage worry you, Daniel? I mean, on the surface level of things, you know, when Nigel Farage stands up and says, well, actually, he's going to increase the tax th threshold, he's going to help university students um, with the tuition fees, then that sounds convincing itself. But you have to also bear in mind his political history, how he's tried to get into Parliament. It's not actually worked out. And perhaps this is um, an attempt to say what people want and to eventually get into Parliament, as he's always hoped. Um, obviously, it's a bit different to the conventional two-party system we've had in this country between Conservative and Labour. So people uh, may be more persuaded to vote for him to have a real difference in this country um, and its political sphere going forward. Um, but personally, as a young student, there's a difference between saying one thing and uh, actually carrying out that thing. So if Nigel Farage is concerned about uh, young people, about students, then um, you know we need to see more from him as opposed to just a manifesto and um, these words. Yeah. Let's move on to uh, some housing uh, issues. Uh, obviously, in London, it's more acute than anywhere else in the country, the housing crisis, and it perhaps sums up all the problems that we have elsewhere uh, because of just how expensive it is and how dense it all is and the population here. Uh, Keir Starmer's uh, policy on, on help to buy doesn't seem too different from the Conservatives really in any case. Um, what do you guys make of that and what do you think the real big issues are, are on this? Because as we'll touch on throughout this as well, we have a Labour mayor in charge who's also got responsibility to build homes and things like that. Uh, and he's often blamed the government for, for almost everything, saying, I'm not getting enough money. But where does the responsibility fall at his feet? And where does it fall in terms of the government of the day, either? Well, I think, you know, um, um, Mayor Khan has always tried to build as many homes as possible in, in London. And if you think about the targets that the Conservative government have set, they haven't hit a target yet. They've said over a certain time they've done it, but when you think about all the targets that they've had every year, they have it, and they haven't hit it. And if you then think about, as I say, what Sadiq Khan is trying to do, he's bringing, you know, rentable housing there and, and various other things in other places. He's at least attempting to address the balance as the Mayor of London. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, you know, in the government they have a Mayor for London, sorry, a, a, a Minister for London, and you then have these two opposing sides trying to fight against each other and not getting anything done. Maybe mm -hmm. with a Labour government, you've got a Labour Mayor and a Labour government, things will become much more easier and smoother in trying to achieve the aim of getting a million and a million plus um, homes done in this Parliament. Yeah, well, that's interesting you say that, but City Khan has missed a lot of his targets on his housing as well. And, and it, there is, seems to be a lot of confusion over what he likes to do. He co constantly talks about affordable housing and things like this. Uh, but is there really such a thing as affordable housing in London? Perhaps not. Uh, Steve, what's your take on this, uh, particularly on the back of what I was saying about that sort of gridlock between Sunak and City Khan? Could that be helped? with the Labour Party in charge, or if it, if it doesn't help, then surely there's a real issue with a, with a Labour government, or a Labour uh, leader in City Hall. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, so I think, I think you're right that I think if there's, a, there's the, the Labour government that's, that basically holds the purse strings on, on what he can spend, then there may be, I believe there is a will to, to sort this out, and I think if the money is there, I think it could be found. And I think social housing, is probably the way forward. Like you say, affordable housing in London, is there such thing? I mean, I'm very fortunate of where I live. I live in Canary Wharf at the moment, um, just about. Uh, and I was only able to do that actually because there was a little slump in prices around about the COVID time, which is when I was looking to move. So um, it's ironic that I couldn't afford my house right now actually. But I appreciate we're not 
I'm not the, the, the demographic we're talking about at the moment. I think social housing and, and build, just simply building more houses is, is probably the way forward. And, and I think probably with Labour holding the purse strings, that will be a little bit easier. I did feel there was a bit of kind of um, party bun fights between the two. Uh, I'm not saying that Sadiq Khan has got everything right. I think um, he needs to sort out his relationship with the police. I think that is, is quite toxic, but... Um, but generally, I think he's got the will to kind of sort out the housing thing. It might find it easier with the Labour, Labour government. Yeah. Uh, turning to you, Naomi, when you look at the current situation in London, rent and house prices, do you see ever, even under anything any party is offering you, uh, a chance to buy a home in the next 10, 20, 30 years? I mean, as a young person, I do have quite um, an unfortunate outlook. I don't see myself owning a home in the current state that we live in. And I think there is, you know, a want, there is a need for affordable housing in London. But as you said, does that exist? Um, could that exist under a party? I mean, potentially we've had the Conservatives in power for over a decade. So maybe it is time to pass on that baton so that we can experience life under a new rule and potentially have affordable housing implemented. Daniel, but a lot of that is out of, out of the control of the Prime Minister, isn't it? It's all sort of dictated by the market and the situation in London where everything is, is just so expensive because that's the way economics works and the way it, it's gone, you know, well before the, the Tories came into power in 2010. So are you, do you share a similar optimism of Naomi that, that, that the housing sector could improve under a different government? Listen, the housing system is broken, especially in London, with the record levels of homelessness that there are. Um, there is simply not enough housing out there to meet the, to meet the current demand. And of course, whilst the Prime Minister cannot do everything because there are external factors out of his control with to-do housing, we mustn't forget there was actually the Conservative government that actually increased foreign ownership um, in London of properties. That sent properties skyrocketing, skyrocketing up, sorry, and that also meant that whilst people, British nationals, couldn't even afford housing, um, other nationals could, billionaires could in this city. And so this means that many people are being priced out of their local communities because billions of pounds are going into new projects that they simply cannot afford. So I think if there is going to be um, new housing in this city to address the demand and the needs of people. It needs to be, first of all, for the working people of the city who can actually afford it, it's uh, just the top 10% or 1% that is benefiting the government directly through that. Yeah. Ivor, are you a homeowner? And, when, and if so, when did you buy? Uh, okay. I'm, I'm a part of homeowner, I know, and I kind of got into the market very early, about 20 or 30 years ago. Mm. So, you know, when I hear about rents of being like a 1,000 or 2,000 pounds, sometimes uh, just for a room, mm. it, it's, quite, um, it's quite shocking. Um, I suppose when you think about when you buy a home and you expect um, when you have a family, the family leaves and then they set up a home, you set up and then you then have the situations where people who are becoming you know, much older, 20, 30s or even 40, still living at home. There is a crisis. You have to understand that people want to get on the housing ladder. But when you think about the times where you only needed a small deposit of £5,000 or £7,000, now you need 25, 30 grand mm. for a deposit on a house. And most houses cost between a quarter of a million to half a million pounds. People can't afford that. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. Steve? I agree, yeah. I mean, I, I put um, deposit down on my first house in 1999, and I think that was £5,000 that yeah. I put down. And um, I have just been very, very fortunate yeah. that, uh, that because I was able to get on the property market at that point, that um, I, I kind of, you know, have kind of managed to kind of work my way up and everything, and I've got um, the property in... Uh, Canary Wharf, and I should also say that I am a landlord as well. I know people are going to be mm. boo <laughs> like that, but uh, I and I agree that the the house uh, the rental is crazy at this yeah. point. I mean, I always keep the rent absolutely the same for all of my tenants. 